Hi, Jeff Spira here again, and today I'm going to talk about uh, power for uh, home-built boats. Um, typically, these are going to be outboards uh, that I talk about here, So, but there's a lot of variables that go into this. So, you know, I say in my, um, my website and, and promotional materials that some, mine are some of the e most easily driven boats that you can build. You know, of course, there's, you know, there are slower displacement hulls around that take surprisingly little power. And I'm not really going to talk about uh, um, displacement hulls right at this time. But uh, I'm going to talk about planing or at least semi-planing hulls, you know, like most of my designs are. You know, and almost all the home-built boats out there fit into that category. You know, I'll get into a, a displacement power boat in a future video. So this this one's for planable boats, which uh, include the vast majority of mine. So, so, to, so let's start by talking about shaft size. This is something people ask me a lot. You know, do you want to? Is it for a long shaft or a short shaft motor? Well, you know, it might have been that way at one time, but there's actually four or five sizes of shafts uh, and lengths these days. So, um, so what this refers to is the distance between the top of the um, cutout that the motor clamps to, to the cavitation plate. That's, that's the shaft length. Okay. Um, so... This is, you know, um, this is available um, in in a in a bunch of different sizes, and typically where where you want to go is that that cavitation plate should be at the bottom of the boat or one inch below. So for a flat bottom hull, it should equal the, you know, the depth of the hull, and for a V bottom, it should be at the point of the V where that cavitation plate should go. Uh, or again, one inch below that, uh, somewhere in that range. So that, that's kind of how these are designed. So the original, um, well, the standard length boat is, um, is listed at uh, 20 inches. So that, that distance from the clamp to the, to the cavitation plate is, is 20 inches, which is 508 millimeters for you guys that don't use the inch system. Um, this is uh, um, both available in lower horsepower and higher horsepower. And so th that's what years and years ago they used to call a long shaft, but now it's, it's what I would call a standard shaft because a long shaft is a different dimension. So, um, and that's, that's, you know, that's a, that's a good size to, to have and it's a good size to use and most of my boats can be adjusted for different shaft lengths, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in, in a little bit uh, later here. Um, so anyway, there is a new a long shaft motor, and that dimension is 23 inches, which is 584 millimeters. Now this is usually generally in higher horsepower boats, and it's typically, um, um, they're used for ocean type boats. They're not really used for, you know, bass boats or, or something, you know, ski boats or things that you would use or flats boats or anything like that. So th these are generally, um, these are generally for ocean boats. And so that, uh, that's another, uh, dimension you can get if you're building a bigger boat and need a bigger motor. And, um, you can, you can adjust your transom for uh, a 23 inch hull or 23 inch shaft. So, uh, and then there's a short shaft motor. Now these were years ago, were all 15 inches and most of them are around 17 inches now, 432 millimeters. Um, so if you've got an older sh short shaft motor, you can measure that dimension, you know, just, just hang it on a, a, a bracket and, and measure, measure the distance. Um, I think I think the the Japanese motors are seventeen point two inches. So now and then most of my boats I claim uh, I say you should make that dimension uh, of the transom the cutout uh, fifteen inches, and um, but that does not include the um, um, the pl planking. So if you put a half inch 
you know, wood on the bottom or something like that. It could be, it could be more. If you put, uh, a, you know, something else on there, it could, it could change a little bit, but I would run most of them at, at around 17 and then you put a half inch on it and then the, uh, um, then you'll be, uh, uh, I mean, if you, it, you run it at 16, I'm sorry, 16, 16 and a half, and that way you put a half inch on it, you'll be at 17. And that would be, that would be the ideal size if you're going to use a modern short shaft on there. So, um, you know, there's also something called an extra long shaft motor, and these were 25 inches, 625 millimeters. And typically these were lower power um, uh, motors that, that they used as auxiliaries on sailboats. So they'd have brackets on the, you know, on the transom of the, of the you know, 20, 25 foot sailboats that they put a six horse, you know, motor on and you know, that was, that was a, a kind of a common thing back in, uh, years ago. And I, I suspect they still do that. I, I, I haven't looked at any new sailboats or new designs, but, uh, they, they used to have 25 inch and they still have some, um, motor manufacturers, um, uh, offer 25 inch shaft motors. It's typically not a high horsepower. It's usually a smaller, um, a um, high thrust uh, type thing intended for planing hulls, but again, um, that's not one that we really need to talk about here. It's not something that you would typically have. Now, you you may have one uh, stashed in the you know that was your uncle's or something he gave to you you know 20 years ago or something, and you know that would be you could build the boat around it. It'd be perfectly fine to do that. Um, or, or you could, uh, you know, put it on a bracket on your existing boat and raise, so, so it could be raised up. So, uh, to, to make that perfect depth. So that's always a, an option. They make, they make, uh, brackets that go on, on the, uh, transom of boats that'll do that. So, so, uh, you know, unless you're building one of my, uh, smaller hulls, um, you know, the 20 inch motors are probably the most usable in, in my boats. So, you know, a little smaller boats like the eight to 12 foot range, you know, you might want to use a 17 inch shaft, but there, for the rest of them, go with a 20 if you, if you, if you have the uh, option. Um, again, some of the bigger boats, if you're building a 28 or a 32 footer and you, you know, you're going to put a 90 horse on it. You might want to go with a long shaft, a 23 inch shaft, particularly if you're going to use it offshore. So, okay. So that's the, uh, that's the story on shaft size. Now, um, the Coast Guard actually, uh, has, um, they've got a, a document that's called safety for home built boat builders. I'm going to, I'll put a copy here. Uh, this is, um, this is uh, recommendations uh, for home builders, um, and uh, uh, it's a it's a good document. I, I I offer it on my insider site, so if you want, join the insider section and you can download it. It's a pretty weighty document and it's fairly lengthy, and it's not it's not for the uninitiated. I mean, it's not for someone who, you know, isn't used to doing you know calculations because it's got a lot of formula in it and stuff. So you, you, uh, I mean, if you, if you're, if you're an engineer or you're good at math or something, you know, you're welcome to download it and, and play with it and start doing, uh, doing these kinds of things, but you have to kind of be familiar with, uh, um, with doing these calculations before it really makes sense to do it. So anyway, it's got formula in there to calculate the re maximum recommended power for home built, uh, boats. Um, but there's two formulas listed in there. The first one is for remote steering and at least a 20 inch transom. Uh, and uh, the second one is for uh, tiller steering, a flat bottom and a 15 inch transom. Um, so, um, you know, I, I use, I use for my smaller boats, I use the, uh, the, the flat bottom um, 15 inch calculation, tiller steer calculation. And, uh, but for most of my boats, I use the uh, 20 inch transom and remote steering. 
I don't know why they they carve out tiller and remote steer steering. I, I, I to me it uh, doesn't make uh, very much sense. But I guess the Coast Guard figures you can control the boat better uh, with a steering wheel than you can just by you know turning around using a tiller. I I, I will operate under that assumption. I I know plenty of people that can tiller steer just fine, and they uh, they don't seem to have any troubles at all. And uh, I don't know whether remote is, is a, a different issue or not, but I generally calculate it for, um, for 20 inch transoms, whether they be V bottom or uh, flat bottom. And then if you're going to use short shafts uh, and a flat bottom, then I'll go with the, uh, with the other calculation. So um, I've created a, um, a spreadsheet for these uh, and, and I used to give out uh, that spreadsheet. I, I think it's probably uploaded onto my insider site as well, but I haven't been keeping it up because I do these calculations and actually put them on um, the specification block on the page one of all the boat drawings. So if you look down in that block, it'll say, you know, Coast Guard maximum recommended horsepower. And again, I, I kind of divvy them up. On some of them, I use both, both the uh, Coast Guard uh, recommended for for tiller and a Coast Guard recommended for remote steering and 20 and a, and a 20 inch transom. So, cause some of my boats can be built either way. You, you can, you can do like the Tillamook or the, um, Seneca, for instance. Uh, um, if you build it simply, you could put a 15 inch motor on it and, uh, and, and steer it with a, you know, with a, you know, um, just a just a tiller shaft, you know, where you stand and hold the shaft, and on the um, uh, you know, or you can put a center console on it, put a twenty inch in it. So I, I, I list both on some on some drawings, and uh, I don't on others. So, but I've calculated these out, and and I list them on there, um, the maximum. So, um, okay. So um, you know, are these absolute numbers? No, they're recommended maximums. You, you can violate them if you wish, you know. I, I think that all of them are way too much motor for most of my boats, but um, guys have gotten a hold of me and said, you know, I've got this, this good running, older 90-horse um, motor, and yours says maximum 65. Can I use it on your, uh, on your boat? And it's, if it's a two-stroke, you know, it's probably plenty light enough so the boat will handle the weight. And a lot of times I'll say, yeah, hang it on there, give it a try, see what you think. Um, and um, uh, a lot of them, you know, they, if you keep your foot out of it or whatever you call it, if you don't go accelerating and, and, and trying to, you know, run up a top end all the time, you know, then I think it would be, uh, be fine to use. You know, you run them in a cruise power, you know, low cruise power, 60% or something. Uh, you know, they're not putting that, that much horsepower. The boat can handle the weight. So I, I don't see where it's a, it's a hard maximum. But, but I would try and trust those numbers as, as being, you know, the end of, you know. It, again, it's a safety issue. So if you, uh, if you don't exceed them, you're, you're going to be safer than if you do. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, my, most of my boats run with a lot less power than you might imagine. Um, here's a, uh, here's a, uh, uh, rec you know, I, I put a recommended power on these and, and that is usually comes from experience. Um, and you know, it comes from what people call, you know, write back to me and said, I use this and I'm very happy with it and da, 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 da. So, um, you know, here's a builder, for instance, that has an 18 foot Carolinian and, uh, and he and his wife and daughter are on, you know, who, who's a, a child in this, you know, she's a preteen and, um, and they were running, uh, uh, on a river in Florida. So, um, um, anyway, have a look at this clip. Unbelievable, that, unheard of. 
ultimate unprecedented in fuel efficiency tarpon river this boat is building why i built this boat because this boat runs on a 10 horse engine and sips gas this is the prius of boats anyway the you know i i, I uh power i recommend is typically plenty of power to actually uh have a good time on the boat. It'll it'll perform well, I believe, and it'll it'll handle, you know, uh, being out in the ocean in rough seas or whatever, um, ad perfectly adequately, uh, and get you going, you know, up up on a good plane and having fun, and uh, but not uh, make you cry when it comes time to fill the gas tank because that's the other issue, you know, that I, they they they. Uh, you know, many of the power recommendations that you see on modern boats are are there because the boats are fiberglass, and they're usually heavy. They're usually very heavy. They're a lot heavier than you might think. And, um, you know, a lot of people think, well, that's not enough power. You know, I got to put, put some real power on and make it go fast. And again, you know, it's I, I, I'm not one of those, uh, you know, racer types or, uh, you know, I'm not interested in, you know, drag racing anybody so um or or you know uh doing anything that's that's wild and crazy i just like to cruise on my my boats and you know i'll go over here and go over there and get it up on a plane and you know go fishing and you know look at the scenery as it goes by kind of thing so i'm not really a I'm not really a power kind of guy but so but my so my recommended powers are are Again, plenty for the boats, and um, and I don't think you really need to push it. So, well, um, I hope that uh, explains some of the things about the power recommendations I make, and about about some of the motors and and some transom details. If you're looking at the drawings, if you don't really quite understand why I'm talking about different dimensions and, and such uh, for the transoms. Um, they, I show in the um, uh, ply on frame manual, I show how you modify a transom to use different uh, sized, uh, um, different, different shaft length motors. So it, it's included in all the boats. They're not particularly designed around any one specific shaft size, except some of the real smaller ones. They're, they're designed around short shaft motors, but... Um, but you can now you can take a look at it now that you know the shaft dimensions and tell which motor I, I re am designing the boat around. So anyway, I hope this helps. Also, if you like the this video and more and would like to see more like it, go to my um, YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. It's called Easy to Build Boats, and the channel link is, is also down below, uh, below this, uh, um, this video in the description. And, um, and while you're there, please subscribe and hit the bell so that uh, you get notified when there's uh, new videos up. Now, I've had the channel since 2007. I've got uh, videos of, I don't know, I think there's 90-some videos up there maybe more, 97, something like that, maybe more. I, I'm putting uh, more up every uh, a couple times a week now. I'm putting a lot more uh, uh, videos up. Uh, I'm trying to, trying to make, increase the activity of the YouTube channel so you can learn, you can see what other people build and, uh, and hear what I have to say about uh, different styles, boats, and how to build them and um, all kinds of interesting things there. So drop by and take a look. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.